you still need a battery everybody needs a battery they just don't know it yet so if you're one of these people that has realized that you need a battery but you don't want to make one well today i have just the thing for you i'm going to review a battery that's already made ready to go let's get into it there is a new breed of battery-based power packs on the market. The reason is because batteries are amazing, but not just any batteries. I'm talking about lithium battery cells. They are the reason the electric car has made a comeback recently. They are the reason we carry a supercomputer in our pockets that mostly lasts us all day on a single charge. But can they really compete against established technologies for providing us with power? We shall see. Today we are reviewing the Delta 1300 model EF3 Pro. This is a 31 pound 1.3 kilowatt hour battery box capable of delivering 1800 watts of continuous power and up to 3300 watts of surge power at 120 volts 60 hertz. It has 6 AC plugs, 2 USB A 12 watt sockets, two USB fast charge 28 watt sockets, two USB 60 watt sockets, and one car power 13.6 volt 100 watt socket. On the input side, it has one AC charger input, which is rated at 1200 watts max, and one DC solar charger input rated at 400 watt max, 10 to 26 volts. So the specs on this product are among the best I've seen yet. But do they hold up to scrutiny? Let's test capacity. Okay, here we go. We just started our capacity test. Let me walk you through my test setup. First, my load is a 1500 watt heater with three power settings, 500, 1000, and 1500 watts. I will test capacity at all three levels to see if we can see a difference in performance. To measure the flow of energy, I will use the onboard power meter, but to verify the readings, I will also be using a Suryutech PR10 power recorder. So let's start the test. Okay, so here we go. This reading right here is the power consumption. It will ramp up to around 1500 watts eventually. In the center is the battery level in percentage, and this is an estimation of runtime in hours and minutes. On this side, we have a thermal camera showing degrees in Celsius. And finally, this is the most important number, the kilowatt hour reading. 1%, so 950 watt hours so far. All right, so there it stopped. It's got 0%. So I ran this test three times at different power levels, and here are the results. Cycle number one, at 1500 watts, I was able to get 1,055 watt hours. Cycle number two, at 1,000 watts, I was able to get 1,045 watt hours. Cycle number three, at 500 watts, I was able to get 1,050 watt hours. Now let's look at the charging cycles. The first cycle was right after the 1500 discharge cycle. So that means the battery was hot. And as a result of that, oh, the system started charging at only 27 watts. It eventually ramped up, but that means that this first cycle took two hours and six minutes to complete. And it took a whole 1.69 kilowatt hours of energy in. Now on the second cycle, the battery was cooler. The system started charging at 700 watts. And that time it only took an hour and 40 minutes. And it took 1.65 kilowatt hours in. On the third cycle, the battery was completely cold. And as a result of that, then it started charging at the full rate, which is 1200 watts. And that time it only took an hour and 30 minutes to charge the battery and it took 1.66 kilowatt hours in. So the average of all three of these charging cycles as far as how much energy it took from the wall comes out to be a 1.66 kilowatt hours. So one thing to note is that what this means is that this system is smart enough to take the battery's temperature in consideration and instruct the charger 
to charge slower to protect the life of the battery. Now that's a good thing and that's something that I haven't been able to reproduce on the DIY side of things. At this point, the efficiency numbers look like this. Now this number here is what you're able to put in from the wall into the unit. Now this number here is what actually goes inside of the actual battery pack. And this number here is what you're able to get off out of the plug of this unit, right? So what that means that these numbers here are the efficiency. While going in, only 78% of the energy that is being pulled out of the wall actually goes into the battery, and only 81% of the energy that is stored in the battery you're able to get out of the plug. That means that on charging cycles, about 22% is lost, and on this charging cycles, about 19% is lost. What that means is that when you put it like this, 1.66 kilowatt hours goes in and only 1.05 kilowatt hours goes out that means that this unit has a round trip efficiency of 63 percent now that figure is not that great but it is to be expected on a unit as versatile as this the things that would increase efficiency most likely would add considerable size weight and cost to this product thus making it a trade-off that's just the way things work now let's look at the ac signal under a scope i have a small portable oscilloscope here and i'm gonna turn this guy on and here we go well look at that that looks pretty sinusoidal let's see what happens when we put it under load here's 500 watts of load there we go that didn't change much here is a thousand watts you can see there a thousand watts and that didn't change much here's 1500 watts and you can hear the fans but look at that that sine wave stays pretty true so it does pretty well now let's put this guy into an actual real world test let's see how well it powers stuff around the shop first up the compressor here is a 150 psi max 1.9 horsepower uh compressor can it run off of the delta we shall see Next, let's make coffee. So it's doing its thing? Yep. Oh, look at that, 1300 watts. That's it? That's it. So no problem. And it's almost quiet. There you go, see, you do need one of these. Okay, let's stop messing around. Because this battery pack here has manly specs, I am going to skip all the nonsense tests that youtubers are doing stuff so we're gonna go straight into manly stuff like welding <laughs> okay so it tripped the breaker Well, there's your answer. I guess you can weld with this. Of course, uh, this machine has four settings and it could only go up to number two and sometimes it actually trips the breaker. So it'll, in a pinch, this thing could actually do it. All right, the ultimate test for this Delta battery is to charge that Tesla right there. So I have it connected. Let's see if it'll charge it. Okay, so far so good. 900 watts. Yeah, so in the car I have it set to 8 amps. How about we'll do 10 amps? How about 12 amps? 
Yeah, I know, charging a Tesla is dumb. You'll get a whole extra three miles of range, but it proves the point that you could do it, and maybe, who knows, three miles is just enough to get you to where you're going. Now, it's time to test the solar charging. First, we're gonna try these 85 watt solar panels that come, or you can buy with the Delta. We have midday sun right now. Let's see what we get. So we're getting about 69. 70 71 watts uh the battery's at 85 percent so maybe if it was in lower state of charge we would get a little bit more but at this rate with this kind of sun this battery would put about you know 15 percent uh state of charge in three hours so that gives you the idea let's try the other bigger solar panel okay now those are connected look at that 200 watts at this rate yeah we would uh totally do them in one hour so this solar input has a max of 65 volts 10 amps max right so so if you do four of those panels then you get somewhere around 85 which is about 20 volts too much so you can't really keep adding panels on series you'd have to connect them in parallel all right here is my favorite part that's where i get to show you what's inside first you start by taking this little thing off here here we go you see that then you remove all these screws and then this part just comes right off. Next, remove these guys. Ooh. And then you take these screws off. Next, you flip it on the other side. This side. All right, so here's where we remove connectors for the battery. Disconnect these cables, these screws. And we remove. Okay, next we're gonna remove these four screws. Remove this little connector part, which. There we go four screws on each posts here and here we go you just liberated the whole unit we don't need to take this further apart because it's just a bunch of metal and plastic so let's take this battery apart here we go we we'll just lift that all right here we go here is the battery this is the best part of this teardown uh there's 10 cells across and seven cells forwards which means that this is a 10s 7p block and there's two of them so as you can see here in the back uh pretty interesting uh the use of pcb to connect the one block to the other block which makes this a 14p no 14s right 14 cells in series uh 10 cells in parallel right so yeah this would make it a 48 volt now let's look at the cells here what are they they're kind of nondescript chinese cells all that we can read is gphn 18-25p i googled that and there is not much info on those cells so they're just chinese cells probably 3000 milliamp hours or 32 3200 milliamp hours because this is about 1.2 or 1.3 kilowatt hours i think that's what the manufacturer claims to be but of course after our test uh accounting with the inefficiencies of transformation from dc to ac power then uh you are able to get one kilowatt hour right so other than that this is a pretty simple design but pretty clever it's got these little handles here that allows you to grab it and install it into the thing and then after that is just the bms the bms is quite big and beefy and it's got quite a bit of thermistors look at that so there's uh two of them here two more over here and then there's the one here that it's right on the uh mosfets there right and so that is the battery all right next on the list here is the inverter this is what an inverter 
would look like if I would have to make a 2000 watt custom inverter, right? It differs a bit from the other ones that are commercially available because just in the setup, right? As far as the components, yeah, they're probably about the same as not got nice beefy uh, inductors in here and transformers. It's got nice thick silicon cable here to be able to handle the, uh, the 1800 watt continuous and it's got very good airflow design. Uh, by having two fans on each side, which, which allows efficient movement of air uh, through these aluminum heat sinks here, right? And that whole row of MOSFETs. And here we go, a transformer. And of course, it's got these little baffles here to be able to keep the airflow right where you need it. And then here is the other board, which is the low voltage uh, DC to DC section, right? What you have in here is the solar charge controller, which essentially is uh, which is essentially a charger, right? That goes from up to 65 volts down to 48 volts, right? And then here on this side is a 48 volts to 12 volts, right? To be able to power that car the 12 volt port right and so that's what this board is separate from that one that one is just to make 48 volts into 120 volts ac right and then this is the dc to dc section this is very well laid out in a different board that goes on top of that one and then of course we have the four fans here that uh handle the airflow to keep this unit cool on the rest of the parts you just find very well and thoughtful design here it's nice and compact on the other side here well it's pretty much the same thing we have a nice layout with one big pcb board here that is going to handle all the dc to dc this is a really low voltage uh set up with the, all the usb ports in here now it's time to put this unit back together this is how you test if it's well designed so first we start with the battery all right after putting it together let's see if it passes a test look at that it turns on this is very good design you can take it apart you can service it then you can put it back together in a few minutes all you need is essentially one screwdriver and um i'm very very impressed with this unit and i'm glad that, that someone out there is making good quality products like this one right as final thoughts is this delta 1300 a good product it seems to be it lives up to all its promises, which is kind of uncommon in this market sector. It seems like it's good quality and it should last quite a while. Now, will it? Who knows? But the rumors that the engineers who started this company and designed it came from DJI, you know, the makers of the really high-end quality drones. And if that's the case, maybe this will end up being a long-lasting product. Can it be made better? Yes, one thing that is missing is an expansion port, you know, so you can add more battery. Many of you watching this will say that that is a real important feature and I would have to agree. Now, luckily, that is a real easy hack that I can show you how to perform in a separate future video. But in a perfect world, it should have been included. Is this product priced correctly? I think it's a bit on the expensive side, but comparing it to its competitors, once you stack up the features and the actual real world performance against claim performance, it stacks up pretty well and it's very competitive. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this comprehensive review of the Delta 1300 solar power pack. Please share and like this video and let me know in the comments if this product would serve your energy needs. Until next time, We'll see you. Bye.